Proverbs chapter 20, verse number 16. <clears throat> Take his garment that is for surety for a stranger and take a pledge of him for a strange woman. Now we're looking at collateral. And we've seen already in Proverbs, collateral, co-signment of a loan. It's not forbidden, but it's strongly advised against. And what Solomon writes in chapter 20, though, he, I mean, he didn't write down chapter 20, right? Verse, chapter. But in the chapter, Solomon's writing, if you do co-sign and the person is a stranger, man or woman, you better get some collateral. And we've read pre previous chapters about co-signing and collateral and it's best according to the scriptures and a man that got wisdom from God. Don't do it. But if it's a stranger, the Bible says collateral. Well, why should I give you collateral? Hey, listen, the Bible says bread of deceit. Bread of a deceit. People who deceive their meat and potatoes, is the old expression, is sweet to a man. Look at the money I got. Look how well I'm doing. Look at my status. Boss is happy. My job is happy. But afterwards, his mouth, the one, the deceiver, is filled with gravel. Broken teeth, unable to swallow, not tasting so good. It's going to cause pain and misery. You don't eat regularly, have a meal of gravel. Every purpose is established by counsel. Get advice, get help. That's one thing Solomon stresses with the book of Proverbs. And get proper. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> that one snuck up on me. And as we see the Bible and study 66 books of the Bible, and we know about God, we know about Jesus, we know about the Holy Spirit. And we know about the devil. There's a good godly counsel, and then there's a devilish wicked counsel. You gotta get the right ones. Every purpose established by a counsel, whether you got a good counsel, it should be good. When you get an evil counsel, it's gonna be evil. And with good advice, see, good advice, not poor advice, make war. So what do you do with a Jehovah Witness we haven't talked about in a while? We don't go for military. We abstain from the military. We ought not to make war. When a Jehovah Witness goes in and says, I'm not going to do military service because we're not to have battle. Proverbs chapter 20, verse 18. Well, that was Solomon. And then you go back and quote all the places that God told Moses, told Joshua, told the men and, and women, uh, uh, Deborah in the book of Judges. Uh, 1 Samuel, where, where God told David, go in there and wipe them totally out. And God told the king, King Saul, go in there and wipe out the Amalekites. Our government should take a stand and say, look, we're a Christian nation. If we were a Christian nation, we would go up to the Jehovah Witness and say, book, chapter, and verse says you're wrong. Sign on the dotted line, get in the military. I 
I hit with I hit with one verse, and and if I were to go do a study in the Old Testament, I could come up with other verses. He that goes about as a talebearer, a liar, reveal his secret. Therefore, meddle not with him that flattereth with his lips. Can I take 2019 for another aspect and I don't want to say twist, but turn it to another application and go off into another lane but we're on the same highway? You're a Christian family, you want to do right, and you're going to send your children to the library or to the school, and somebody's going to sit in the chair. And they're going to tell their your children about tales. About little rabbits talking to people and a big fat man coming down and we're gonna tell a story. Should Stalin, should I have my children go and hear stories? Are they tales? Oh yeah. I'm going to read the wrong verse. Um, <laughs> he that goes about as a talebearer, reveal his secrets, therefore <coughs> meddle not with him that flattereth with his lips. I mean, there's flattery, you know, just butter you up and make the message sound, and this book sounds so good. And I feel another scene's coming. Whoso curseth his father or his mother, Authority figures. His lamp. Light. Candle. Spirit. Look at chapter 20 verse uh, 27. The spirit of a man is a candle of the Lord. So you know what. I don't know if the modern Jewish people do it, but you know what the old time Jews would do? They would have a candle in the house, my understanding, and it would be a lit candle. Today I understand some do it with electric candles. As long as that child is living, that candle is lit or that candle is, is, is burning. And to a Jewish person, I am told that, that it symbols life. And when the child has died, they blow the candle out. They turn it off. I'm also been told by a Jewish man that I know that was saved, uh, is saved, that when a Jewish child comes to Jesus Christ as their savior, there are some families that would have mock funeral. They would blow out that candle. That child is dead to us. So we're looking at life. So a child that curses his parents is God and the Holy Spirit and Psalm is death. Shall be put out in obscure darkness. The Old Testament was to bring that child to the gate of the authority of people in this city and they're to stone that child. That's death. An inheritance may be gotten hastily at the beginning if that don't remind you of a Bible story. But the end thereof shall not be blessed. That all reminds you of the Gospel of Luke, the prodigal son. The story of the prodigal son was already pre-written. They say this says about a thousand BC. So it's plain and simple. Say not, don't say this. I will recompense evil. The golden rule. I will do unto others as others do unto the Bible says, don't even say that.
but wait on the Lord, and he shall save thee. Vengeance is mine. I know somebody used to quote that all the time. And Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. I, God, will repay. That's the proper scripture. Divers wait, different sides wait. Look at verse 10. Divers wait in diverse measures. Both of them are alike, abomination to the Lord. Verse 23, verily, verily, the divers weights are abomination of the Lord and a false balance is not good. Cheating people out of business, look at verse 17, the bread of deceit is sweet to the man, but afterwards his mouth is filled with gravel. That man that deceit, he's come up with different ways and balances for my favor. Abomination. Not good. So what do you think a Christian is going to happen when he ends up the judgment seat of Christ? And he's gone into a business, whatever it is, and he's used deceit and fraud to get, of course, all in the name of Jesus Christ. How about this one? Shall I take some gasoline and throw it on the fire? Here's some gasoline kerosene. Here's a guy, here's a Christian involved in fraud and deceit and gets money and pays his tithes into the church collection plate and they know what that guy does for a living. If that's not aiding and abetting, I don't know what is. Oh, people don't like my gasoline. God does. Man's going are of the Lord. Why am I born? Why am I? Why? What I am doing today, God's involved. God has. And listen, that's one of my prayers. I will want the things that I will, God, I will do to who, what, where. I say, God, the moment I do, I say, Am I what you want me right now? And there are several times that I will, when I'm alone with God, and no one else can bother me. God, am I what you, am I what I am for you? God, am I where, and I'll say, am I Daytona Beach, Florida? Is this where you want me? If not, Lord, we're going to move. Lord, my whole purpose of being is this why I, for you. Because I'm here for a reason. I better be why that God wants me to be here. When? Am I when what God, am I, what I am doing, am I doing it proper time that God wants me? Who? Am I who what God wants me to be? Who, what, where, when, why? How? Am I howing what God, listen, I will ask God those things. God directs our path. And if you ever read, and I'm reading again, Pilgrim's Progress. Pilgrim goes off into, a, oh man, I could never remember that. Downing Castle. He's taken a path that is not for proper. And yet while he's in that dungeon, a key that God's given him was able to open those doors and set him free. But he didn't seek the counsel of God on the avenue that he was to take. Now I preach and teach, and I say it's true, to the fact is when we go off on God's road and we go about our own road, God stops. And I've seen it. Now God's forever with us. I'll never leave thee or forsake thee, but... I'm talking as far as our walk with the Lord. When we go off against God and backslide or another avenue, God stops right where he is. I'm not continuing my walk with you until you get back to where, where we were. 
Now the Holy Spirit goes with you. And the Holy Spirit is in you. You just add in more baggage. And I've had this happen in my life. And I've come completely around and boom, there's the Lord right there where I left him. And I got more baggage on my life. And we've got to ask God who, what, where, when, why, and how of our walk that the man's going is the Lord. You are where you are because the Lord put you there. We have already read in the scriptures from Genesis to Proverbs, there are poor people because God made him poor. God knew with Pharaoh being in Egypt that that was the right Pharaoh, that he would never listen to God, and that was the right Pharaoh to put all the plagues and put all the signs and put all the wonders for the marvel of Israel to begin a nation. The foreknowledge of God. How can a man then understand his own way? And what I believe this verse is, is, all right, there's God's way. And I don't know if it's talking about saved or lost. <clears throat> oh, my throat. And I'm going to take it as a lost man. How can he understand his way where he's not walking in the Lord? You know, again, I, I say this often because I don't, I don't want you to think I'm boasting about myself. I'm just, I've taken two classes. I've taken ministry classes and I've, I've taken writing classes. And speak what you know. And we've been over six years at the farmer's market. And I guarantee there have been people that visit that farmer's market when we've been there preaching the gospel. And giving out gospel, to, I guarantee there have been people there. What on earth am I doing here? What's that guy saying? What's that girl trying to give me? Then when my wife used to hold a sign, what's that sign say? And you and me come across to a farmer's market in Daytona Beach for whatever reason. But God says, I want you there because I got servants there and they got a message for you to hear. Now, woe be to me. I want you to go Saturday morning. I want you to go preach. I don't want to go, Lord. Listen, I got people going there. I want them to hear the message. Uh, Lord, not today. I'm tired. And they go and end up at the, at the farmer's market because God directed them to be at the farmer's market. And I wasn't there. Whoa. Yeah, listen, I know God has said, you know, times I've been in the hospital, times I've been sick, times I've been stole, told that, you know, don't go out. Yeah, God understands those things. I'm talking about a time when I just don't want to go. It is a snare, a trap. To a man who devours that which is holy. Whatever is right, whatever belongs to God, he just wastes it. And there are people in the ministry. And their only ministry is, it's an easy job, I want to get work. I want to get money. There are, there are people in churches, whatever denomination. And that man... Whether it be a priest, a prop, whatever he calls himself. Our church only meets on Sunday morning. What about Sunday night? What about Wednesday night? Oh, I ain't going to work those nights. I'm just going to work that Sunday morning. Boom, I'm done. I know of pastors that won't go visit you in the hospital. open. People looking at me. People loving me. They're in a holy calling of a job, but they've got other motives. And it's going to come back and bite them. It's going to entrap them. After vow to make inquiry. 
I mean, that's the soldier in the battle. Oh, look, oh, God, you get me out of this battle. Get me home. I'm going to be that preacher my mom wants to be. And God got you out of battle. And God got you home. And then you just forget what you honor God. Listen, that battlefield religion, that battlefield prayer is holy before God. And, oh, okay, I'm home now. Better realize any vow you make, even scared vow, God will hold you to it. How many men who have been in battle are going to stand before God, save their law? So, where is the minister I, you, I expect you to be? Huh? What? You were in that battlefield, and you said, Lord God, the body, yes. If you get me out of this battle, yes. I will become that minister. I will get. I will go to church. I will get saved, and I will. Okay. And I protect you all during that battle, and I protect you. Once you got home, you, you lived like the devil. Well, I was just, yeah. That was just, and that's any vow you make. You sign your name, you say, to death do you part. Well, I don't know. Okay. Wait till we get the book of Ecclesiastes, the Lord Terry. You've been ensnared and trapped. A wise king, Jesus Christ, scattereth the wicked and bringeth the wheel over them. That wheel is punishment. That wheel is correction. And that don't sound comfortable at all. But you can, you can look that up online. You know what's other interesting about that wheel? Ezekiel tells us about the wheels of the cherubim. And is it Ezekiel's or Solomon's item there talks about wheels. And it talks about God being a, on a UFO flying thing that looks like the, the, the Ark of the Covenant with wheels. Maybe the second half that, maybe that Ark of the Covenant is coming on the wheels of the cherubim. That's, that's out there, so... Don't quote me on that one. The spirit of man, our life, our air. God made man, God breathed into man, and man became a living soul. The candle of the Lord, and again, I talk that symbols light. Searching out all the inward parts of the belly. Candle it represents light. Can I mess up one of your church doctrines? Okay. Stick of dynamite for this one. Revelation chapter 1. We're going to have a church campfire. Stick of dynamite, please. Oh, styly. Okay. First, the Revelation chapter 1, verse 20. The mystery of the seven stars which thou sawest in my right hand are the seven golden candlesticks. The seven stars are the seven angels of the seven churches, and the seven candlesticks which saw us are the seven churches. Back to the problem. Eh, what was that? I didn't get that. Proverbs. The spirit of a man is a candle of the Lord. It said those seven candlesticks are our churches, right? It says here, the spirit of man is a candle. Those churches are not buildings. They're people. Scripture with scripture. Come to my church Sunday. You're invited to our church Sunday. You can't come to the church if you're unsaved. The church is only made up of saved individuals. Of sheep, not goats. 
And if the rapture were to happen, if your unsaved person comes to church, they don't go up in church. They're left behind. Searching all the inward parts of the belly, I don't have any idea what that means. But I know they can do that with medical tests today, MRIs, x-rays. Mercy and truth preserve the King, Jesus Christ. His throne is upholded by mercy. It's in the second advent. After he judges the goats. The whole world is going to be filled with mercy. The curse is gone except for the snake. The glory of young men is their big muscles and strength. Look how much weights I can lift. And the beauty of an old man is his gray hair. And we read earlier, gray hair is, is an honor to a man if it's used wisely. Yeah, okay. Chapter 16, verse 31. A hoary head, a white or gray hair head, is a crown of glory, if it be found in the way of righteousness. So there is something to age and hair churning to gray and white. And it can be according to Solomon, whether holy and right or evil and wicked. The blueness of a wound, I would assume, assume that's, that's a, a, a bruise. Cleanses away evil. Now, that would be some form of correction. The rods being beaten. And it's supposed to be driven out of sin and wickedness. But we don't do that no more. And, I, and there are some nations that do that. And the Americans, oh, how evil would they flog the kids over there? Are you a Christian nation? Yes, we're a Christian nation. How dare they flog? The Bible says you are to. And the very instance that Americans get upset that other countries correct their citizens shows you are far away from the Bible than that heathen, what about the heathen? I never heard that one. I've heard most of them, but I've never, what about the heathen? Now you watch, Saturday somebody will come up to me about the heathen. So do stripes. Now who do you know got stripes? Paul and Jesus. Now they got stripes for doing well. And we've already seen in the book of Proverbs where a fool, you're to give him stripes. The law states if a man is worthy of stripes, and there was, there was a standard set forth. Them public chest chastening and parents chasing their children are supposed to be for good and not, oh, we're not going to give them a little kiss on the, on the forehead and send them to bed. So do strike the inward parts of that, and there's that belly again, and I got a question mark there. I don't know what it is about this belly. I can't answer that. So I got to leave it like that, and my ignorance, and God wants me to know one day, God will let me know.